And Jared, uh, a lot will ride, of course, on what Jay Powell says this week. Uh, but October was a month that <laughs> uh, some were expecting a crash. Not so. Yes, uh, we just had the best October in the Dow in its history. That goes back to data in 1896, so that's uh, quite a few years. However, you go to the NASDAQ, and it's the opposite story. It's only the best October since last year, so let me show you how this is breaking down. Here is the Dow. It's up 14% over these 21 trading days right here. You can see that on your screen. And now I want to post uh, the returns for the NASDAQ, down about 1% today. It's up only about 3%. I think investors will still take those gains, but it just shows you um, how this has kind of been a bifurcated market. And if I step inside the market, you can really see a difference between the high flyers and the losers here. This is what's going on today. Let me just change this to a one month view. Energy up 26%, followed by industrials, 14 financials, 12 materials, 9.8%. Healthcare staples also right there with it. Um, these are some big gains for what are traditionally the more value sectors of the market. Uh, everything's in the green, but communication services, that's what houses meta. Guess what? That is taking up the rear. That is still up about half a percent. Now you take a look inside the NASDAQ and you can see some outsize uh, winners and also outsize losers. Apple up over 10%, Amazon down 10%, Tesla down 15%, Meta down 30%. Uh, but you put all this together, and I think a lot of it is going to hinge on uh, what happens with the currency situation in us. And speaking of the currency situation, what's happening with the Brazilian real? Because we had uh, the elections in Brazil. Lula da Silva, who was president from 2003 to 2010, has won that election. So now he will be doing a third term. He had served two consecutive terms before. He's seen as a leftist, but more moderate. So where are currencies right now? Because the real has done well against the dollar. Yes, it has. And here is the month to date on the on the Wi-Fi interactive showing that the U.S. dollar has actually sunk about 3 percent over the month of October versus the real. And that's versus uh, gaining uh, versus a lot of these other currencies. You can see in the upper left up 7 percent versus a ruble, 6.7 percent, the Argentine peso. Uh, so the I, what I want to point out is the uh, Brazil was actually hiking rates. They were the first among uh, all the developing companies and the developed company countries, excuse me, who uh, began raising rates. And that was earlier in uh, 2021. So going back to, let's say, March, uh, they were raising rates in a time where most people were cutting. Most people uh, in the Fed were talking about the transient uh, inflation, and they were taking this seriously. As a result, they haven't suffered as much pain as a lot of the other uh, currencies. And I'm not just talking developing market currencies. I'm talking the developed ones like the yen and the euro for and just to circle and put a nice bow on everything's with respect to the federal reserve this wednesday i think this is going to be pitiful pivotal because if jay powell doubles down on his strategy on the jackson hole saying we are going to hike no matter what in the face of all this and doesn't really stand down doesn't use those words and there's going to be a lot of questions i just hesitate to think what's going to happen for the risk markets because a lot of this perceived uh dovishness is already baked into that Jared Blickery and Alexander Semenova, thank you so much for joining us.